Hey, what's up everybody? Video 44 coming at you in another video. All right, so we got a few things to talk about in the NBA. Uh, one being the Dallas Mavericks resting players tonight against the Chicago Bulls. They got like five players resting tonight, and it's a must-win, quote-unquote must-win, if you're trying to make the playoffs game. Like, if, if they lose, they're eliminated. If they win, they're not eliminated, and they're resting people. Christian Wood's resting. Uh, Green is wrestling. I think Kyrie Irving's dealing with a foot. Maxi Kleber's out. Someone else as well I saw on there. I think it was Tim Hardaway Jr. This is very, very problematic. Um, in, in a sense that that you're asking your fans to believe in your your attempt to make the playoffs. You got superstar talent on the team that you've traded away meaningful players to receive. And then in a game that you're still mathematically in a position to make the playoffs, you you bow out with with healthy players available to play. I don't know if Dallas fans are going to take well to that or not. But if I were a Laker fan, that would not be acceptable to me. Um, if this were the Lakers doing that, rather, that would not be acceptable. I think at the end of the day, um, you know, they got to do what's best for their franchise. I, I see the bigger picture there. Um, from the beginning, I've seen the bigger picture there that, uh, they really didn't have enough to begin with. They weren't built to succeed. I told you guys that upon trade, they weren't built to win a championship this season. They were built to, uh, give themselves an opportunity to see $36 million expire from their books and be able to do with it what they please. Now, many think that is re-signing Kyrie Irving. I'm not certain what they're going to do at all. All I know is at the end of the year, they have $36 million that they wouldn't have had if they didn't make that trade. So that's really what it comes down to. Uh, and that's what it looks like it was all about. Uh, I don't I don't know how Luka Doncic feels about this. He's probable for this game. This game. He'll likely be out there trying to help his team win uh, and try to keep his playoff hopes alive. I don't look at this as a season. Luka Doncic should be exiting uh, the playoff situation. He is not a player that needs development. He's not a guy who's... Um, looking to be a part of a rebuilding situation. He was a, someone who led his team to the Western Conference Finals last year with similar players that he has available to him tonight. Um, so I, I, if I'm him, I'm really assessing my future and what I want to do. Uh, I'm probably not too thrilled about anything that's happened this season, including the trade. Uh, and so, you know, I'm looking at everything in Dallas and I'm just saying this speaks to just a quitting mentality in my opinion they're just quitting they're quitting before it's necessary to do so and i think it's sad i think it's it's something the fans should react to i really believe that um and i'm glad i'm not over there as a fan i'm glad i'm over here even though we got our own problems what we're not doing is quitting before we're mathematically out of it uh having lied to our fans about what our intentions was um that's that's how i look at that mark that's exactly how i look at that so um Another thing, just another nugget that has nothing to do with, with the Dallas Mavericks moving on from them completely. I'm in into my Los Angeles Lakers. I got some clarity that will help us a lot, a tea leaf, so to speak, that will uh, give us some understanding as to D'Lo's injury. Um, according to the Kamenisky brothers, D'Lo is dealing with some type of callous uh, uh, concerns in regards to his foot, some longstanding callous injuries uh, that give us an understanding as to why his, his play has been so sporadic and why he hasn't ultimately uh, been available at times. Um, he's just going to have to deal with that, I guess, is what they're telling us in regards to um, managing the pain. You know, it's not really something other than that they can really do for him. I guess they gave him some type of medication and it didn't take well, according to those those fellas there. So what we're going to do is just keep that into in mind and not ask him to do more than what he's being asked to do. Uh, but that's really what it's about, having clarity. And then from there, taking that understanding and, and incorporating it into what we know because otherwise we're using tea leaves and we're speculating and we're listening to other stuff that may not have necessarily been the case whatever the case may be clarity in regards to this young free agent is i think the most important thing we want to know what's going on with him and that's ultimately what i think a lot of times is in the best interest of him uh to not tell everybody depending on what's wrong you know what i mean so it becomes a, a frustration type of frustrating type of thing to deal with uh when you think about it because you know a free agent wants to appear to be as healthy as humanly possible 
you know, at all times so that they can be in position to 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 be, uh, you know, able to be signed and and seen as, as their highest level um, within their their what they're represented um, financially. So when you have a guy with a problem like this, they may not want to necessarily tell the fans what's going on. They don't want to tell the public or they may want to keep it from us uh, to a degree or lie about it or what have you so that they can maintain that that leverage. But at the end of the day, um, you know, fans are going to speculate. In this era, we're going to sit here and we're going to talk. And we're going to figure it out. <laughs> you know what I mean? And if we don't figure it out, we're going to tell you that we're not happy. And that's going to create a whole other angle um, that, that free agency will need to deal with. So they just got to evolve and understand that trying to withhold things from fans when we're losing, it is not going to go without a voice <laughs> that will challenge it and create problems for you. So uh, you got to strategize accordingly. I wouldn't. I don't know what to do if I'm on the agent side of the game. Um, maybe I don't react to that at all. But you're gonna have a lot of unhappy voices uh, when and, and and misguided conversations being had around your free agent uh, when you don't tell us what the hell's going on and we're trying to win something. So that's really what it comes down to. Now that I understand that, we don't have to talk about it in speculation anymore. Uh, we want him to heal. We want him to get his surgery in the off season if that's what's going to be required. Um, you know what I mean? So we can be 100 percent. And unfortunately, when you're a free agent, the last thing you want to tell teams is that you're going to have a surgery of any kind. So he's in a tricky spot. Um, but that's his talent will garner him enough uh, free agency attention versus who else is out there. I don't think it's a heavy free agent pool to where I still think he'll get his money just the same. Uh, but it did not help that we didn't know what was going on. Put it like that. It did not help. It would have been much better if they would have just told us immediately, yo, he's got calluses on his feet. It's going to require him to be managed a certain way for the foreseeable future. So don't expect too much out of him defensively. Don't expect too much out of him consistently from his minutes and just use the player accordingly. That is something we can use. That is something that keeps us quiet. That's something that has us tempering our expectations and applying less pressure to the player. So that's all that needs to be said about that. Um, so, yeah, those are the two nuggets I had for today. I think... Most of what else is out there is just the NBA resting players according to their circumstances. Teams are either tanking or already got things locked up. Other teams are fighting for their playoff lives, but apparently don't want to play everybody or want to load manage some weird stuff that's going on out here um, that I don't agree with at all. I just I don't know, man. You guys have heard me rant enough this year. If you follow me enough, I've, I've ranted about my team. Over the last 24 hours, 48 hours, about as much as I've ran it at all, all throughout the time I've been with this thing. And I tell you, man, my team is just a reflection of what everybody else is doing around the league, not respecting what matters most. That's really what it comes down to. We're just behaving like everybody else, not valuing being excellent. It's just a big, huge era we're in it's like a whole culture we're in where everybody's just fine with not winning so much you know it's like excellence isn't obtainable based on the difficulty of the task so we need to just temper our expectations it pertains to excellence and just manage and what i'm telling you is that defeats the purpose of even measuring talent against one another let's just stop looking at the old guys and the new guys all together and don't give me nothing about records all stars or any type of comparison data whatsoever if we're not measuring ourselves based on trying to beat those da that data if you're not trying to get better what are you doing that's essentially what i'm saying to the nba if you're not trying to get better what are you doing you know what i mean that that's what it really comes down to everybody's trying to make money but they're not getting better what they're doing and it shows people cool with losing people go resting people cool with with, with making excuses for themselves. We're just heading in the opposite direction as it pertains to the stuff that we've already evolved through as, as in an athletic world that's supposed to be moving forward. We're letting people dilute the excellence of it all, the work ethic of it all, the, the overall commitment to, to what it is that you're doing, the attention to detail, all of that. It's like we're, it's like we're moving opposite of the direction we're supposed to. We're aging backwards, like... People are forgetting things that they've learned, forgetting things that they've mastered. Excellence is, is passing away and it ain't being manifested in the people we're seeing. And I'm telling you, I haven't forgotten what excellence is. I'm not going to sit up here and say just because it's 82 games, we shouldn't only be averaging, an upper, you know, 50 wins. And half of those wins were just conceding because rest. Nah, nah, hell nah. No, no. Now, I'm not buying because the athletes of yesterday was were able 
And there's even more of them, more capable, deeper teams. So that, nah, the fact that y'all can't handle your schedule versus the guys who had half, half, half the talent on their teams that y'all have now, that's not an excuse to me. You eat better. You, you, you work out better. We have a better understanding of how to manage our, our injuries. We have better overall technology in general. Why are we moving backwards? Why is it less likely guys can play 82 games than it was back in 1996 when guys was doing all kinds of stuff that wasn't taking care of their body properly? Now the better athletes have worse opportunity. No, it's the conditioning of the mind. It's because we have all these things, we think that it's okay to move backwards in our evolution. Sled, we don't have to do as much work. We're getting paid more. We don't have to practice as much. No, you do. You really, really do. Because you're going to really be compared to all these guys who've already done it and you ain't going to measure up. And you're going to be offended when people tell you that. And it ain't, it ain't nobody fault that the facts tell us that you ain't as great as yesterday's guys and that you're getting the numbers because, well, quite frankly, this is the era we're in. Where everybody's okay with faking the numbers and faking the production, but not actually putting the work in. People want to give themselves every excuse. Oh, health, health, health. You play less ball. Of course, you're going to be more susceptible to being injured. You're sporadic in every bit of your, your rhythm. Every bit of your rhythm, every five games, you got to sit three games. Every three games, you want to sit somebody else because he hit, he missed a couple shots. You didn't even put him in the right rotations. Of course, he's going to miss shots. He's being guarded by a guy twice his size, but you want to sit him and make it so that he only plays every one, every seven days, but there's no consistency there. So it's seven days here, five days here, three days there, two games he plays, five days off. Like, of course, he's going to get injured. And an overall bench is going to suck. And then you're going to tell everybody the team's really good, but the bench ain't good because you don't play the bench. These guys never develop. They hop from team to team to team, sit in the same position on every team, never play. And then when you do call on them, they no good. Why? Because they never play. And you want to tell us these teams is good. They're not. <laughs> they're not. Teams ain't that good, but you know they ain't that good. You just tell these people they're good. You're going to tell them this, that, and the third. They're going to bet on them. They're going to lose all their money. That's where we're at. Ain't got nothing to do with excellence, winning games, none of that. This is why people load manage because they're not serious. They're serious about taking your money. It's a con, bro, and I'm cool on it. But what I will do is use my voice so that the culture that's coming next, the babies who are watching this, they're going to know of something else. They ain't going to grow up dreaming about this only. They're going to hear somebody else saying something else. And they're going to know there's something else to reach for, not just the stuff that y'all telling them to reach for, but actual excellence. There's a chance someone could go out there, play 82 games and win all of them. Yes, all of them. Can you believe it? 82 games played, 82 games won. Yes, it's possible. You condition your body for that. You don't allow yourself any excuses. And if that's the measure, you're going to play that. And if they double the games, you're going to play that too. I'm telling you, man, I'm not up for the, for the nonsense. Dudes that I know played eight and nine basketball games in a day, all day long when they was 15 years old. Now I don't want to want 48 minutes. Can't play back to backs. You lived on the court when you was a kid. What happened? What happened to that love? I'm not up for it because I know. I know better. I know better. It's mental conditioning. It's people telling each other it's okay to be okay. It's to second place. It's okay to be. It's okay to be cool. We all all right. We're going to have fun. People talking to people, telling people it's okay to be. Eh, we can all be second best together. It's fine. We're friends. The whole culture. I hear like three people talking like me. Everybody else saying we really need to just be okay with losing because, you know, everybody loses. Everybody don't lose. That's the point. There is a pentacle somewhere. Someone doesn't lose. And you know why? Because they don't think like all of you. And I'm going to think like him because I want to win too. A lot. All the time. No matter what the challenge is. No matter what the opponent's on. You're supposed to be scared of Phoenix. Let me get out of the way of Phoenix. I'd rather play a one game elimination situation than play seven games with Phoenix. If you assess Phoenix Fox pop. If you assess Phoenix properly, you know they have just as much fear of you as you of them. But you're too busy looking at yourself saying you can't do it to assess them properly. Focus on the wrong stuff. Losers. All of you. I grew up on winners, champions. And people who who, who studied winners and champions. People who idolized Ali. You know what I'm saying? I don't know about all this losing. I don't I don't get with all this. Oh, we're fine because the, the field makes it so that it's not safe to win. It's not safe to win. It ain't safe to play 82 games. Cool. 
this cut down on some of the games. But don't tell me I shouldn't want to be like Mikael Bridges to play every game. Don't tell me that, that I should try to be like Kawhi Leonard, play once a year and have fresh legs. Come on, man. This dude played 48 minutes yesterday for the first time since he's been a clipper against the Lakers. And I'm supposed to congratulate him. Man, get out of here. Where is the competitive nature at? Where is it? That's where I'm at, man. I don't care nothing about what I'm seeing because I know it ain't about winning. The only measure people really after is the money. That's where the win is for them. But see, we don't get none of that. They still got us in this archaic mindset that we're supposed to be winning basketball games when they win in a different game. They ain't even playing this. Over it. And the athletes hate it. And I think Luka Doncic is being punished for the money thing. That's what I think is happening. And I think he's going to go out there with nobody because he pissed somebody off. That's what I think. It's trash, man. It's trash. And brought Kyrie Irving to that team like he could actually win there. Y'all knew damn well y'all set that boy up for failure. I told y'all that. I told everybody that. They didn't bring him there for him to succeed. They brought him there to be exposed to somebody who can't do it yet again. I'm not stupid, bro. They didn't have enough. And they weren't going to have enough. Made Christian Wood half the player he's supposed to be. He's supposed to be out there tonight going for 40. He ain't going to even be available. Rest. <laughs> Look, I'm telling you right now, the fans are the ones that get the worst of it. Because they're the ones like me still sitting here like, but we're going to win. And I'm going to believe it too. And I'm going to buy on FanDuel. I'm going to do all this stuff. And I'm going to get the tickets. And I... Man, if you look close enough, and if you look at this the way it's supposed to be, Seen, you understand, hey, people are doing things the wrong way, man, and your team ain't going to win because of it. But it's okay because everybody's doing things the wrong way. So your team may win just off a of default of everybody else's just as an as your team. Look around. They all suck, <laughs> like in their own way, comfortable with winning 30 games, 40 games a season. Or more, if it'll help them get wet by Yama. Teams with some of the best talent in the world, losing on purpose, get developing horrible tendencies that they're going to take the new teams when these teams trade away these pieces by the way oh yeah Keldon Johnson going one for ten you think he ain't gonna do that when he's traded to the Suns next year come on man these tendencies carry over to teaching these kids how to lose and I'm not confused that's why I rent the way I do that's exactly why I rent the way I do when you have much passion for the for the league and for the sport as I do Loved it since I was nine years old. You watching people go out here and disgrace it every day and wear the same colors as the teams that you rooted for and went against with pride. These dudes are wearing the same colors. Nah, saying they the Suns, saying they the Celtics, saying they the Lake. Yeah, nah, y'all ain't none of them. I watch the Celtics. I watch the Suns. I watch the Lakers. I know what they look like when they're really competing. Not just slapping stuff together. Oh, this is going to work. Yeah, nah. Have ESPN and all of some. Nah, it's going to be great. Look, ah. Who's on the back of that bench? How many points he averaged? How many times he played? How, how, how much playing time has he gotten over the last three years? Are you expect him to do anything at all off that bench? Or is it just going to be Devin Booker? 40 minutes. And that's what y'all leaning on. Yeah, we're going to win. You sure? Because his backup is going to give away every, every point he has. But it's fine, though. Because ESPN told you to put your money on it. Nah, buddy. No, don't put your money on that. Don't put your money on anything they got going on right now. Because even if it looks like it's going to work on paper, they're just going to whistle, 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 whistle. Whoever they want to get to the line, that person's going to shoot a bunch of free throws, and that's going to determine what happens. It ain't going to be nothing that makes any sense. That's what I've learned this season. That's what the truth is. It's garbage. That's why I just sit here and I tell people what I see. Look, people are cool with losing because they know if they do their best, they're probably still going to lose. <laughs> That's what it is. And I'm telling you, we need to remove that environment. We need to overall shun that culture all the way out of existence. Make these people feel like they are wrong for doing this to the sport that we love so very much. And don't be afraid to. Because I'm telling you, I've learned something about this world. If they can't sell you this, they'll sell you that. The bottom line, they're going to make their money. You just got to tell them what it is you will not stand for. That's all it is. Don't be confused. These people have a million different ways of making money. If they can't get it done this way, they'll find another position there and take it that way. That's why I'm going to make them take another way. Stop rigging the NBA.
Stop making these players feel as if they're not capable of doing what their body should be able to do more so than any of their predecessors. This is called evolution. People get stronger, faster, smarter, not the other way around. You can't lie to us about that NBA just so you can manipulate things. I know better. BDL 44, I thank you all for watching. I'm out.